of the key platforms of the subscription television industry is niche broadcasting. Some might even call them niches within niches, as many of the well-known brands have several channels in order to deliver either more content or more specific content. A good example is Lifestyle, which has grown from one fairly general channel to four more specific ones in Lifestyle, Food, Home and You. It's a move that's resonated with viewers, the original channel taking out many of the Astra Awards this year and for the second year running, Channel of the Year. Sitting atop the Lifestyle tree is General Manager Nicole. Nicole Sheffield and she joins us now. Nicole, welcome, congratulations. Thank you. How many awards does this take your, 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 ba your bag to, your tally? The tally? Oh gosh, I don't know. Last year, this year, well look, this year was fantastic. We obviously took out Channel of the Year, we took out six awards. So uh, including the most popular presenter which uh, and the most popular show and the most popular international show. <laughs> so they're the ones we really love because the viewers voted for those. So, But it was all really exciting. Great night. Because you win both the popular awards and the awards that the industry give as well. So it's not just one or the other, is it? So I guess the you understand the popular awards because people like your shows yeah. and I guess your industry peers are impressed that you can make the highest rating program so they, they give you a, a nod to Yeah, look, it was, it was a, yeah, a great honour on both accounts but uh, yeah, and Channel of the Year as well was great. The difference being this year I guess that you, um, Grand Designs was new to the mix where yeah. Selling Houses Australia has been around for a little while now. Yeah. The Grand Designs sort of pushed you back out again in front of uh, yeah. people. Yeah, and we were so excited for Peter Madison to win um, most out the best new talent so I uh, was host, yeah, yeah. Well, he's the host so that was wonderful and Grand Designs won most outstanding lifestyle program so again that was wonderful it was kind of hard with that one because we had also had selling houses and Matthew Hayden's home ground all in the same category so we kind of <laughs> knew we'd win one of those <laughs> we're obviously starting to see I mean this this sort of home renovation thing started many years ago you know with the original yeah. block and, and then it kind of dwindled away and then lifestyle picked it back up and now we're obviously seeing uh, you know the blocks back with a vengeance and the renovators do you get ever sort of a gut feel of how long that these the sort of popularity of these shows will go for like a, a cycle if so. look we don't look at cycles we obviously look at trends and mm. we, the property genre is huge for us for lifestyle obviously it's 60 percent of our prime time content we have a whole channel called lifestyle yeah. home so when you know the block and the renovators which are really free to wear kind of con constructed mm. reality programs rather than what we do which is observational property programs when they come along they you know they're great they're fine they don't affect us at all but and those trends Trends are interesting to watch, but they don't impact our channels directly. So just they don't help or hinder you in any way. I'm, I'm just wondering if you know you, you, we talk about it all the time. You seem to get this surge in popularity of whether it be cooking, you know, helped by MasterChef, and yeah. then that spawns a whole lot of other things. Do you kind of get that sense that wow, now Australians really interested in anything to do with the home at the moment? So they're getting all that noise coming yeah. from, from free to wear but that's going to actually help you guys well it's not look it's not a direct correlation you certainly at the moment aren't seeing our ratings our ratings are very strong and in the last 12 months we've grown 15 percent in prime time which is fantastic um, particularly with all the competition so you, you can't kind of see direct correlation but I would, lifestyle foods a great example mm. certainly it's had enormous growth in the last 12 months I think it's three or four times larger than it was and there's no question that the master chef phenomenon mm. has got people cooking and got people interested Interested, and once you you know open up a passion, they want more, and uh, we certainly cater for that. But you know specifically, it's really hard to to see a direct correlation. I'm interested. A few years ago, you and your crack programming team would have travelled yeah. overseas. You'd go to the TV markets. Yeah. Probably not a lot of people after some of the content that you're getting. But the free-to-air channels now are really delving into that area. The digital channels, yeah. you know, I think Seven Two's got some, you know, quite a bit of. Uh, home programming on certain nights of the week. Yep. Has that A put up your prices and B made it you know harder to, to buy some of the shows? Look absolutely there's no question it's so much more competitive than even 12 months ago um, and really from our perspective it's up yes it may impact some prices um, we are absolutely have a crack programming team and they are on fire all the time and acquisitions team and we just make sure that we track faster than anyone else we know these genres better than anyone else I mean we sit back and we say we are the leaders in lifestyle media that means we should sniff it out before anyone else does and we use, we always do yeah. and right. and fortunately for us that means that we get the best content and so what you do see the minimal lifestyle content you see on the digis um, they are really old programs that are you know out you know air, that are prime time programs for us and we make sure that's the case yeah uh, um, I've forgotten what I was going to ask you but it's a very good question um, 
you've got four channels and I guess you know they've, they've grown out of one so you've now yeah. sort of split them all out becoming a little bit more niche has it become more difficult for you I suppose to fill or um, what are the challenges for you in being able to fill all that space that you now have Look, there are a lot of challenges, but ultimately what we try to do is Lifestyle's our master brand. It's our hero channel that all the other channels come from. Mm -hmm. That has to be strong and it has to feel very healthy. Um, but And the other channels have got really important niches and roles to play, but they've also distinct brands that have, you know, really strong um, attitudes and brand values. And when we look at content, I mean, case in point, Lifestyle Home, we've introduced a whole heap of US and Canadian content that we've found onto Lifestyle Home that's far to pace and it's younger skewing it would never have worked on lifestyle channel it just didn't fit that brand didn't fit what our demographic wanted and it fits perfectly on home so actually what it's done is just broaden the pool of content that has we have available to us um, does it mean it means a lot more hours of work and then we're requiring basically 1200 hours a, a year per channel so you know you're now looking at 4800 hours there's a lot of hours that you watch that you don't buy before you buy them so yeah it adds a lot but it's a lot of fun too What's to come? Grand Designs Australia was your big show last yeah. year. Is there a big program to come yet this year? That's There's lots of big programs. I mean, at the moment, that we've got It Yourself Sexy coming at the end of next month for Sarah Lifestyle Wilson. Year with Sarah Wilson, and that's that's a great show. Um, we've also got Relocation Relocation Australia, which you know is a well-loved property format. Um, the UK show works very well for Lifestyle, and we're absolutely really excited about the Australian one, just like Grand Designs kind will of... Will that be on your main channel? That will be on Lifestyle, yes, and that's in September. Um, and we've got Planet Cake, which I can't wait for in November. Sounds it's good. absolutely mad, which is great. No, Cakes is huge. Trust me. <laughs> well, cakes is huge. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll expect you in here with the Cakes. Yeah. Right. That's okay. <laughs> Carl, thank you. Um, you can stick around if you want. I just want to run through a couple of the uh, the other stories making news in the media sector this week with James. Uh, we don't have much time. James, Don Churchill retiring. Yeah, the uh, Fairfax is our chief executive in uh, Victoria. He's run the business down there for quite a while. 46 years in the media, both in New Zealand and here. Um, he wanted to retire a couple of times over the last two years, but uh, Greg Highwood asked him to stay on there, finally letting him go. Uh, we've got uh, Feast magazine. We've talked about that a little bit in the past, but we've got a bit of a sneak peak of what that might look like. Yeah, like stuff better. Still be consulting for uh, breakfast TV yeah, as well. Seen Bolo. He's been on Twitter quite a bit of late. <laughs> um, uh, London 2012. The countdown has begun this week. Yeah. Um, Foxtel revealed they're going to have eight high definition channels. So um, you're not going to be missing anything uh, next year. Less than a year to go now. Um, and also, if you haven't got HD, that you can see all those channels in standard definition as well. Uh, and while we're talking of Foxtel, um, because this is always very popular, Australia's next top model. They've unveiled the look they have yeah it um, starts a uh, Tuesday night I think it's August 8 at start so we're not far away starts off with a hundred models this time the first year it's been produced by shine Australia uh, they promise bigger and better things and from what I've seen so far they've I think they've delivered <laughs> shine doing America's next next top America Australia's next, next top, top model, model and MasterChef yes <laughs> Um, let's have a and look at the <laughs> and let's have a look at the ratings for week 30 in free to wear Australia's got talent in the top spot this week followed by MasterChef Sunday Monday and Tuesday in second to fourth place respectively this week and the block on Sunday in at fifth place uh, seven news Sunday in at six Downton Abbey seventh MasterChef on Wednesday and Tuesday in eighth and ninth place and nine news Sunday rounding out the top ten this week uh, James also I'm interested to get your views the renovators uh, kicking off uh, during the week, the ratings not probably. Yeah, what it hasn't cracked for. a million yet. Ten would have certainly been looking for that. It got pretty close on a couple of nights, um, so it's still too early yet. This is, you know, six nights of TV. Mm. It's going to run for, you know, we're going to end up with I don't know, 60, 80 episodes or something before it's over. So it's a bit premature to judge Do it. Do you get uh, a sense that it's on. ramping up or? No, not at the moment. Uh, it'll be the, the big test will be when MasterChef finishes. Yeah. Um, and we should say it's the last series of MasterChef that Fremantle are doing. Shine will take over for, for the next one. So it's when that switch, it'll move earlier to 7.30 at night. So that'll be the big test. Will those audiences build significantly? At the moment, it's sort of hanging in there. Do you like it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. I yeah. do, actually. But six nights, it's a big commit, you know. Yeah. Um, 
So whether it will hold the audience, as you know, if you master chef six nights, the block's now six nights a week. So mm. it, it's asking a lot of the audience. All right. Let's check in on the subscription TV ratings for week 30. Top five sport programs first. West Tigers v Roosters uh, in the NRL coming in at first. The Titans v Cowboys in second. Dragons v Sharks in third position. And fourth place, the Rugby Union Tri-Nations Australia versus South Africa. Um, in fifth, the AFL North Melbourne uh, versus the Western Bulldogs. Dogs in the non-sport category. Oh, there's my favourite show, James. Number one, Big Fat Gypsy Weddings. Uh, followed by The Incredibles in second, Gold Rush, Alaska in at third, uh, fourth Project Runway and Family Guy rounding up the top five. Fantastic. Always any chance to talk about Big Fat Gypsy Weddings. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Um, thank you, James. Good to see you again. Thanks, Carla. Catch up next Enjoy week. Again next week. Uh, before we do go, a sad day in the Canberra Press Gallery with the death of its oldest and longest serving member. Rob Chalmers died on Wednesday after a long battle with cancer. He was 82. Mr Chalmers started the Inside Canberra newsletter in 1957 and outlasted 10 Prime Ministers from Menzies through to Kevin Rudd. In a statement, the Prime Minister calls Mr Chalmers one of the greats of the gallery and has offered condolences to Mr Chalmers' family and friends on behalf of the government. That is Media Week. I'm Kylie Merritt. Thanks for watching.